Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And today I'm gonna to be making myself a tumbler. <laughs> now, I definitely don't need a new tumbler. I have so many cups, but this design has been living in my head rent-free for well over a year now. I saw this photo on Instagram a while back and I just knew I had to get this design onto a cup. This cup has all the elements that I love. We're gonna have a matte section. There's some ombre, there's leopard print, there's glitter. I'm even gonna add some rhinestones. I'm so excited about this video. I <laughs> I just really love this tumbler, and I don't really know that this is a tutorial more than it's just me taking you guys along to design and create something that speaks to my heart that is 100% my style. So I'm gonna have all the products in this video listed and linked down below in the description box. You might even find some discount codes for you there as well. And that's definitely enough chit chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, you guys, so as usual, I'm starting with a fully prepped and sanded cup that I've spray painted already with a flat white spray paint. If you need help with prepping your cups, I will link a video down below that'll help you with that. I'm going in with Ocean Mist from Rust-Oleum, and I'm gonna spray paint a little bit of an ombre. I want just a small ombre from white to mint from the bottom of my cup. I don't really need to spray all of the top of the cup because I'm gonna go over that with pink later on. And I needed to go in with a little more of the flat white just to blend the bottom and make sure I didn't have any of the mint overspray on the very like butt of my cup. I'm gonna let this dry for a good half hour or so and then I'm gonna go in to hand paint my leopard spots. I'm using an angled brush from the Finnebear brush set that I got from the Banff subscription box. This is from the big sub box. Definitely sign up for those guys. I'll have information on that sub box down below in the description box. And the paint that I'm gonna be using to paint my spots is this black acrylic paint that I got from nmoshop.com. So this is Nicole Merritt's black paint. And I don't know <laughs> what she put into this paint because this stuff is black as night. It is so pigmented and so dark. It's the perfect consistency to paint these spots and this brush is angled perfectly to just really create something special here. I know a lot of you are rolling your eyes at me right now because you're seeing that vinyl cut with leopard print already over to the left of me and I'm using that just as a reference point. Yes, I could easily slap some vinyl on this, but I wanted to go with a different look for this. The original inspiration photo had more of a giraffe kind of print. I don't know, it was weird. Uh, so to make it my own, I figured I'm just gonna try something new and paint in these spots and I really loved how it turned out. Remember I said in the beginning of the video, I was kind of just like riffing a little bit and creating something fun that I just wanted to do just for me. So I don't know, I just felt like painting these spots and I had a great time doing it. This paint dries pretty fast and it really only required one coat. There was like two small spots I did have to touch up later, but it went on beautifully. I was blown away at how gorgeous this paint went on. After about an hour or so, I'm going to epoxy over the whole cup. I've got 30 milliliters of Alumalite's Amazing Quick Coat. This is their fast setting epoxy and I've mixed just a little bit of Peachy Olive Glitters Bright into my epoxy because I wanna give my cup a subtle sparkle. I don't wanna to do too much to where I would cloud that dark pigment from the spots, but I also wanna make it really clear that the bottom part be a little bit sparkly because we're going to do an ombre of paint over this that I don't want to be sparkly. I want there to be a clear distinction between sparkly and not sparkly. All right, so as soon as that dries, which I let it dry for a full four hours before I'm gonna paint over it. Remember, that's a fast setting epoxy. Your dry times may vary based on the brand and type you're using. 
I'm using Candy Pink from Rust-Oleum to create a ombre paint right over this. Again, the reason that I wanted to paint after that first coat of epoxy is I wanted the contrast between the sparkly pastel blue and no sparkle Candy Pink. Once I got the ombre that I was going for, I let it dry for about 20 or 30 minutes and I went in with a paper towel and some rubbing alcohol to remove any paint splatters or like large overspray dots that I didn't want along this bottom section. All right, and then I was ready to put a coat of epoxy over that. So I'm just gonna do a thin coat over this and I'm gonna let that dry for about eight to 12 hours. And then I'm gonna go into my regular sanding routine. You wanna be careful not to sand down too much cause you'll sand down through your paint to expose, expose that blue section underneath. Alternatively, you could have sanded the top rim before you did the pink paint, then do the pink paint, epoxy over that, then sand again. Because remember you guys, we do have to expose a fine line of stainless steel around the top rim of our cup so that our final coats of epoxy are adhering to that fine line of stainless steel to establish our seal for the cup rather than establishing the seal on the very top rim where it's more vulnerable. I'm going to be putting just my J initial onto this cup. Uh, and I cut this using some sort of weird English, it's like an old English font that's in Fonto. I don't know what it's called and I haven't been able to find it anywhere else, but it's one of the fonts that come with the Fonto app, okay? It's not regular old English because it's got that really cool pointy detail uh, inside the thicker section. I don't know what to call that, but anyway, I'm just putting this on with regular black Oracal vinyl. We're going to measure twice. So we only have to cut once. But once we got that on, I am going to do my final coats of epoxy. All right. So we are going to do some matte sections and some rhinestone sections after this. But before we do that, we have to make sure that we have a flawless coat because anywhere that we do the matte finishing, if we have any flaws in our epoxy, they will be magnified with the matte finishing. So we want to make sure that we get a really nice smooth coat, no bumps, no lumps, no little fish eyes, nothing like that. Okay. I ended up having to do two coats back to back to get mine totally smooth. I let that dry overnight before I moved on to the next step. So now my cup is totally done, right? We got a nice smooth coat. Everything looks perfect and wonderful. We are not going to start on this until we're completely done with the tumbler. So how you would finish off a cup at the very, very end, we want to wait till we get to that point before we start on this process. What I'm doing is taping off little marks on either side of that J because I'm going to create like a triangle section on the other side of that cup that starts on either end of the J. And I want that J to be centered between both endpoints of that triangle. So I'm kind of measuring and marking off with a little bit of masking tape. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the distance between those two points that I've taped out and then divide that distance in half. And I'm gonna mark the halfway point on the other side of the cup. And I'm gonna get my square combo ruler out. And I'm gonna use my square combo ruler to mark down a line towards the bottom of the cup where I want my triangle to end. By doing the measurements this way, we have a perfectly centered and balanced triangle. Could you eyeball this? Absolutely. Would it be even on both sides? Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> I didn't want to take my chances, which is why I'm measuring twice. So I only have to cut once, okay? I'm marking the bottom point with a silver Sharpie. We can remove it with alcohol later. Don't worry, it's not going to stain. And then I'm going to take my masking tape and put one end of my masking tape at one of those front marks that I made with my tape earlier and then the end of the tape will line up with a little mark I made with a silver sharpie. We're going to repeat that on the other end. Okay, so the other side of our triangle. Again, just taking a length of our masking tape and lining it up with the silver point that we made with our sharpie on one end of the tape 
and lining up with our little mark from the front with the other end of our tape. In my mind, this was the easiest way to get a balanced triangle on the cup, and this is what you could do with any size or shape cup. It would be a similar process. To the side of that half inch masking tape, I'm also gonna place some thicker painter's tape just to protect my shiny finish from the matte process that we'll be doing later on. If you wanted to mask off the whole remainder of the cup, you could, but I just think a little bit of extra buffer room so you don't accidentally scratch what should be your shiny finish. Once I've got that triangle masked off in the back of my cup, I'm gonna take some Barkeeper's Friend. This is the liquid formula. You can get this at Target for under $3, and I'm using double zero steel wool. You can find this on Amazon, you can find it at Lowe's, Home Depot, any hardware store. I've also got a little tub of water here. Normally I would do this at my sink, but for the purpose of this video, we're gonna work in circles and in sections. And we're gonna put a little bit of elbow grease into it and we're just going to scrub this masked off section that we've created. I also have a timer and I'm gonna time myself doing this for five whole minutes. A lot of you who try to do the different matte pastes and stuff like that have complained that, oh, I did it and all I see is a bunch of scratches. All that means is you just need to go for longer. All right, so time yourself so you know exactly how long you've been doing this. At the end of my five minute timer, I'm gonna wipe everything clean. I'm gonna let it dry and see how much more I need to go. In this case, I needed to do an additional five minutes. Also by stopping at the five minute mark, you can see what sections you might've neglected and work a little harder on that in your next five minute go. Yes, this is gonna hurt your arms. <laughs> yes, this is a little bit of a process, but it's worth it, I love it. Okay, so I went at this for a full 10 minutes and that's all it took to get this to a beautiful, nice, even matte finish. If you find that after a full 10 minutes, you still don't have your desired results, put another five minutes on the clock and continue on and do another five minutes. Once that matte section was all done and dried and cleaned up, I left the tape on, okay? So don't lift that tape quite yet. We're gonna be working with some stones from Peachy Olive Glitters. I will list the size that I got down below in the description box. And I'm also gonna be working with some stones that I found on Amazon in these really pretty like diamond and teardrop shapes. The glue that I'm going to be using to apply these is Liquid Fusion, the heavy duty one. I will also have that linked below in the description box. So what I like to do is just apply a little bit of glue to my tempered glass work mat and pick up tiny bits at a time with the sharp end of my bling picker tool. This is from Auntie Tay. I will have a link for this in the description box as well as a discount code. And I just spread out little bits of glue at, the, at a time. Because we're gonna have sections of just, you know, epoxied cup, <laughs> I guess you would say it, around the rhinestones, we have to be really clean with our glue work. So I want enough to adhere the stones, but not too much to where it's gonna get sloppy or you're gonna see some of that glue from around the stones and kind of muddy stuff up. Also, we're putting this against a matte section so we can't have any shining glue coming out around the stones. All right, so that's why I'm applying it with my bling picker tool. You could also use a precision tip applicator for your glue. I don't really like those. Um, maybe if you guys know a really good one, let me know in the comments, but the ones I've tried have not been great. <laughs> so with the diamond shape, teardrop shape ones, I'm just sort of like freehanding a pattern uh, starting with, you know, a traditional diamond shape at the bottom corner of our triangle there and then just building out with the teardrop shapes. I guess you could probably lay this out ahead of time to see what you'd want to do. <laughs> and then I let that dry for about five minutes and then I went on to place my rhinestones. So I placed my rhinestones in a totally straight line using just a thin line of the glue that I applied with the 
again the pointy tip of my bling tool okay and then very carefully place those stones in a straight line pushing them right up against the tape if i went too far over onto the tape like if i got too much glue on the tape i would just let this dry for a couple minutes and remove just that one section of tape to avoid the glue drying like the overlapped glue drying onto the tape and then risk pulling it up okay uh, and as soon as I was done with rhinestoning, I pulled that tape because I don't want it to dry all the way right next to the tape because then we can run into some problems. Once I was done with the line work on those stones, I moved on to do the bling on the J. So I have just again my glue here, same glue. And I'm just coloring in small sections of the J at a time with my glue and then placing the stones. I'm using all sizes of black stones that I had. I have everywhere between like an S4, SS4 to an SS20 that I'm using to fill this in. So the SS4 is obviously the smallest one I have, so I'm putting that at those very fine points and then filling in like the detailed lines with an SS6, doing more of a scatter method when I get to the thicker points of my J. This part was extremely hard because I could not get glue outside of the lines, so I had to really take my time. If I did get glue on the outside of the J, I just kind of scraped it off before it dried but that's how it turned out. I love it. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. I am absolutely obsessed with this cup. This is definitely one of my all time favorites. If you like this video, please be sure to give us a big thumbs up and let me know what you thought in the comments. And you guys, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I upload new videos every Saturday. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon. And a big thank you to all of our Flynn Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.